my name is Helena De Silva Hughes. I'm the Executive Director of the Immigrants Assistance Center. And the Immigrants Assistance Center was established in 1971 by the Portuguese community that had been here living in the U.S. for many, many years. And in 1971, a huge influx of immigrants were immigrating to Southeastern Mass, New Bedford, Fall River, Taunton. And um, the mission uh, of, the, of the Immigrants Assistance Center um, is and was to help immigrants overcome language, cultural, and economical barriers and help them integrate into the American way of life. Our mission continues to be the same. What has happened is we basically have developed not only helping the Portuguese immigrants, but we help all immigrants. And the largest population of immigrants that we continue to serve it today is still, we have a large elderly population that are Portuguese speakers and we still help the Portuguese community. But aside from the Portuguese community, we also help all ethnic groups, uh, Cape Verdean, Spanish. We also help uh, a large population from Central America that we also provide uh, direct services. Um, our services uh, consist of translation, interpretation, case management, advocacy. Uh, we do a lot of interpretation. A lot of our clients that come in the TICA services are limited to non-English speakers. So they come, uh, many clients come in because they receive letters, they're totally confused. They, um, they're having a lot of issues, sometimes family issues that they they need to be resolved. Sometimes they lose a job and we help them find jobs. But main, you know, we just try to find out, uh, connect them to resources which will help them meet their basic needs. Um, we provide services to families, individuals, um, also a lot of elders. Uh, we have a large population, as I mentioned, from uh, that are elders that continue to seek our services, even though they've been here for many, many years. A lot of them um, immigrated during dictatorship and have very low literacy skills. We still have clients that unfortunately do, don't even know how to write their names, and a lot of them have less than a third grade education. So even though they've been here living in the U.S. for many, many years. They continue to, to meet our services on a daily basis. And um, a lot of them, their children have moved, uh, their adult children have moved to the suburbs, their grandchildren have moved out of state. And a lot of them continue to live in the area in, in New Bedford because of, they're closer to the church. And so that is the church, the fish market, you know, um, bakeries, and so they continue to stay. They continue to live in linguistic isolated neighborhoods. And that is a pretty large percentage of our clientele that come in uh, seeking our services. We're um, assisting about 7,000 immigrants um, per year. I would say half of them are elders and the other half are families and individuals. We are also in, um, aside from them coming into uh, seeking our services here at the Immigrants Assistance Center, we also provide a lot of language support and family engagements in the schools. We created this project called the Amigos Project that we implemented um, there uh, started at Roosevelt and now we are in Hayden McFadden and also at New Bedford High School and we are working with the immigrant kids and the students and at the same time we're working with the non-English speaking band, uh, families because we want to, we know it's so important to make sure that family engagement is also being met and these children, um, that their parents, even though they're non-English speakers, that they're engaged in the education process of, um, of, the, of, the, of the students. So um, that is basically an overview of what we do. Um, we also provide uh, a lot of uh, deportation support services. So we are in Bristol County House of Correction and we work with people who are legal permanent residents, who are green card holders, who are facing deportation due to previous convictions. Or um, So that is something that we also provide um, services uh, at the House of Correction. But what we actually do is work with these individuals who are facing deportation. We are working with the families who are here, uh, who many times 
uh, are left in financial chaos and in emotional chaos. So we provide a lot of support to those to those families too. Um, one of the things that we also think it's very important and that we feel that the best way to integrate the immigrant community is to make sure that they become U.S. citizens and first of all, learn English and become U.S. citizens. So we also provide ESOL classes and with citizenship and civic participation. So we, once they learn the English language, we want to make sure that we start the process so they can become U.S. citizens. We've had two naturalization ceremonies that are held right upstairs where we provide the, um, where we, they teach English. So we think it's so important that once they learn the English and they become U.S. citizens, the ceremonies have been taking place at the Immigrants Assistance Center on the second floor. We had the last citizenship ceremony was in July 31st, and we had 31 immigrants that became U.S. citizens. And we want to make sure that once they become U.S. citizens, they also become registered to voters. And that is um, basically a lot of the services that we are providing here at the Immigrants Assistance Center. We are fluent in five languages. Uh, everyone is bilingual, bicultural. We uh, speak fluent Portuguese, Cape Verdean Creole, Spanish, and French. Those are the languages that our staff um, speak. So our staff represent the immigrant community that we serve. Thank you.